Hello and welcome to Noted. What do we think about the job scenario? It's completely different from what one would say if you're a job seeker. And that's exactly what we would like to find out more from the experts themselves. Joining us today is uh, Khalid al Lehorebi, and uh, he is someone who's very keen on people development uh, throughout his career, but also he's now the managing director and he's an entrepreneur of uh, the establishment Impact Integrated, specializing in artificial intelligence. So today let's meet him and welcome to Noted, Khalid. Thank you very much, Lexmi. I'm happy to be here. Job is the hot topic whenever, but especially during the pandemic, where people are losing jobs, people are retiring, people are looking for their careers to begin. Uh, it is even more important today. What is the current scenario and how has it changed in 2021? It's a, that's a great question. It has changed uh, tremendously, you know, because, you know, jobs are, are, are sort of a recent phenomenon. Mm. Human beings throughout the history of their existence, you know, uh, at least in modern age for thousands of years, we had labor, you know, mm. we did not have really jobs where we had to sit down and, and get paid, uh, except for the few thousand years ago. And I think now what technology has, you know, fast forward to the modern day, what technology has done, it has kind of broke down the concept of job to its original meaning, mm. which is, you know, uh, a series of tasks where we exchange value. You give me currency or money in exchange for my skills okay. or my okay. labor. Yes, yes, yes. But now this has changed where it was in the past, uh, manual labor. You could actually produce something and then uh, whoever is in the position of the employer will give you currency. Now it is uh, cognitive, mm. it is thinking, it is article, it is leadership, it is uh, a creative economy, painting, where you know, we, we see things like, I'm, I'm very interested in new concepts such as NFT, mm. you know, non-fungible tokens. And this is a technology product where people pay for originality. So even originality now can be commoditized in, in a place of something like labor. So in this world, why, what is the value of traditional labor and, and having a traditional job really? Mm. If technology can be in the place of your skill, it means that you need to perform better than technology. Otherwise, your value in what is called the job market is obsolete. Mm. And this is the challenge, you know, back to your question, this is the, ch uh, the challenge that 2021 has posed for us. And it's been brewing for the past five years is that technology is rendering many, uh, many skills obsolete. Mm. So no matter what uh, market dynamics, they're trying to force the job market to assign a value for employees. Mm. This means that it is not sustainable. What is sustainable is that we, as job seekers, we need to compete against who, whatever uh, mean that can perform the skill better than us. Okay. So um, actually, when a job seeker goes to an employer, potential employer for the interview, the situation is different today uh, because the employer already has all these facilities. So we have to market ourselves from the very beginning, isn't it? As soon as a person graduates, whether it's bachelor's school or master's or even PhD, at some point we have to begin to market ourselves. Yes, yes. And uh, I think the most effective way of marketing is the, you know, the inner skills is to be attract uh, for our skills are to be so innate that they will draw the demand to us right because you know it's if, if, we, if we think of it from a supply and demand perspective there is now you know the more the more you have a supply of a, of a good the less its value will be right. but the more rare and scarce the supply of a good is 
the more the value is. Mm -hmm. So now what's happening is that we have a huge supply of job seekers. Mm -hmm. In you know in Oman, for example, uh, we have around fifteen thousand engineers uh, alone. So you can imagine, I and if you that. count ICT, that number can go up to seventeen to eighteen thousand uh, job seekers. So the ones will that would have to drop. Mm. So this is because of the excess of supply. Then the value of that profession will decrease a little bit. Mm. So the only way to do it is that. You know, wherever we are, whether we are in school or whether we are in a higher education institution as, as university students, we need to be so good that the demand will come for us. Yeah. Because if we wait until we graduate, you know, uh, that, that chance reduces to almost nil. Because the other challenge is the, how we are becoming a borderless planet. Mm. If I need a website done, I can get it done through a graduate from Sataka Books University or, or Geotech or, or another, another university or by any other shop in, in, a, in a district in Oman, or I can just open my browser and put, uh, you know, uh, type in one of these uh, freelancers, actually freelancers.com, and I can agree on a price and it could be as, as low as 100, 100 uh, reals mm -hmm. for a website. Whereas locally, it could be developed by almost uh, anywhere from a thousand to two thousand riyals. Ah, so that's where. So, yes. So now the employers are exactly in this spot. Mm. Do we go for the two thousand riyals in country value, the right thing to do option, or should I, in this post pandemic, post COVID 19 world where all my bosses are telling me to cut costs? Should I go to the Ukrainian uh, option and just pay $100 for the website? So, you know, no matter what, the sustainability of the organization means that they're going to go for the, for, the, for the freelancer model rather than committing to thousands of reals over, over many years of spending. Uh, it's unfortunate. But this is something yeah. that societies need to prepare themselves for this, for this, uh, for this modern reality. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important that you actually mention the reality because we're looking at a history where in the 70s, the jobs were almost guaranteed. It was so easy. You know, you were getting the best of jobs. All you needed was a qualification and, you know, places were being weighed in the list and it was there. Um, now, however, it's different. Uh, 80s was still good. 90s was still okay, no problem. The millennium began to see, the, uh, you know, the, the graduates increasing and the job less openings. So uh, from a job seeker's point of view, if I'm speaking as a job seeker, first of all, you know, a, a job seeker is told, you don't have the experience. But how do I get experience if I don't get an opportunity? Uh, two, this is old. This is during the time, you know, I was actually looking for a job, let's say. Uh, but now um, it's still there. Yet the situation is different. Even then we had, uh, my option was to go and volunteer and gain experience. Uh, but here, as you have mentioned much earlier uh, before, that there are opportunities to develop your skills. Where is the missing link? It, where is the missing link? Is it that the, there is, there are, like you said, too many um, graduates and far few opportunities available? And how do you think can make this bridge and balance it out? That's a really deep Sorry. question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my, my personal belief is yes. that it begins at the individual level. Mm -hmm. How, what is your understanding of the universe, of your, of your, of, you know, of your own message as a human being? Mm -hmm. And that leads me to the, to the belief that every one of us, you know, we are 7.7 .7 billion people on this earth. Every one of us, like we have, you know, unique, uh, you know, uh, fingerprints. We have unique set of skills. Mm -hmm. And life is about how do we discover that unique fingerprint or skill on 
adding value to the to to those around us. So this is a, the essence of life. Mm. So mm-hmm. you know, so if we if we begin from that belief, then we need to make everything, the education and the workplace, revolve around how do we harness, find out, nurture, and utilize this uniqueness in Lakshmi or Khaled or Khalfan or Muhammad or Hiba or Fatma to add value to our workplace. Right. And I think humanity and somewhere down the line has kind of lost this concept. We, they are, you know, we were forced to treat our workforce as copies of themselves. Mm, and yes. we must individualize it. Yes. Now technology is giving that power to us again. So it's telling us that, you know what? Uh, now there are different paths. And if I may give an example, uh, I, I will have to give away my, my that, that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting older. <laughs> but, you know, when I graduated in 2000, I remember I graduated in May 2000. And I was a job seeker. And the only experience I had is working in a family shop that was at, at, uh, at you know, telecommunication and, you know, satellite dish uh, okay. business. So very small experience. Uh, but for, for, the empl- for the job market, there wasn't much, even in 2000. And I remember how hard that job seek- seeking phase was for me, so financially. So even if the family was supporting me uh, fully, it still was hard on a young person to have a sustenance depending, instead of adding value, that you have that value delayed of giving it to others. It was, it was such a, a tough time and it affects you, uh, you, it affects you mentally, it affects yeah. you physically. It, you start, you start uh, being drained, you know, the information that you have gained throughout 12 years of education. Yes. And this is what I tell people. And this, I've learned this from colleagues also who I, I kind of interacted with when, when they were working for PAMA, the Public Authority for Manpower. Mm-hmm. They used to always tell me that Khaled job seekers are people under pressure. Mm-hmm. And you cannot deal with them as normal people who will have all the luxury in the world mm-hmm. to be uh, eloquent and polite and patient all the time. They are people who have been struggling with themselves mm-hmm. 24 hours a day. And sometimes struggling with themselves is even harder than struggling with, them, with, a, with an external force. And that was, so my job seeking phase lasted from May until, until uh, January or February where I landed my first job as a lecturer in, in, uh, in college. And so, so you were, you were mean, absolutely imagine right. You, you had, you were going, applying for a lecturer level and you still had the struggle. Uh, yes, and, I, had and, the struggle and I was too. very, yes. our generation was very fortunate. I turned down three full-time jobs in the government. Oh, you did? Uh, yes, bec- uh-huh. uh, uh, because they were not what I thought were I would flourish and utilize my unique skill set. Mm. Those days now are John are gone yeah. unless you fully can demonstrate that you have a unique skill that no one has. So, so these days where people were turned down jobs, so I would say 80% of the people these days are gone for them. Mm. 10% they might find one opportunity where they will be given a choice if they want to be but only around 5% of this body of 65,000 uh, job seekers now who will have the luxury of, you know what, you are the, 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 the skillful right. person that you want. Yes. So, so I think this is, this is what has changed since 2000 and now 2021. But Khaled, you were telling me that uh, they do, that current job seekers do have uh, an advantage and that is internet online because they, as they wait, they can still develop their skills because there are yes. online training and knowledge, information that is available and qualifications as well. Yes, and you know, it's, uh, uh, and this unique opportunity is facing a unique challenge also, uh-huh. is being an in-between, an in-between generation. Right. So our generation yes. that was called generation, uh, for example, X, yes. we were followed by a generation of millennial where, you know, I would say that the previous generations were, were you know, good enough in expanding the market to yes. provide the millennium generation with, 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 with good opportunities still. 
Mm. However, now we have Generation Z where they are even more privileged with online, but they're also asking, why can't we be like you, Khalid, who had three opportunities and got to be a lecturer, lecturer and your skills were average. So mm -hmm. we want to have the same as you, but you know, that's the law of scarcity. There, there are just not many opportunities. So now what are we going to do for the alpha generation? You know, the generation that has been born after 2005, after 2010, they're around 11, 12 years old now. This generation will also is, is torn. Mm. Are opportunities there for me to grab? Or do I have to basically invent my opportunity from scratch? And this is what we are telling the new generations. I and they're saying this is not fair, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they're saying this is, this is not fair. How come you have, your, you have a full-time job, you're happy, and I have to actually, after waiting for 12 years, you're telling me that I need to have, so this is what is experience now. Experience is no longer only the number of years. You have to be special. But they're asking us, why? You didn't educate me to be special. You educated me to have a degree. Yes. So that means one has to start very early for that gen future generation. But for the current generation who are job seekers, uh, what, what do you suggest? I, they, have to, uh, uh, they have to work miracles, to be honest. Uh, time time is, is, is running. Uh, employers have all the resources in the world to find the resources they need to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Government have less resources to incentivize or even push the job market to create opportunities out of nowhere because organizations now have to be very, very smart about what they spend their resources on. Mm -hmm. So they will resist any incentives. They will resist any uh, mandatory uh, job requirements, especially the private sector. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's, it rests on the current uh, Generation Z uh, job seekers to do, uh, uh, to do something. I have seen this. Uh, I was fortunate. We went as a part of the D1 is national, national Leadership and Competitiveness Program. We visited Estonia, which is one of the leading countries in the digital economy. And in the Ministry of Education, uh, we met a young lady who she said that her kids, you know, she has a boy and a girl, nine and I think six. And they came to her with a very strange request one day. They told her that they needed her permission because they needed to create a, a, an, an owner YouTube account. And mm -hmm. when she asked them why, she said, because they get paid. Yes. from their peers to teach their peers how to play with toys online, nine years old. Mm. So she said she approved for the nine years old, but the six year old, she's like, this is just too complicated <laughs> uh, as a parent for me to approve. But, you know, so you see, so that's yeah. for Generation Alpha, this is already happening. Yes. They are using the fact that they can just exist and do something with their hand. And someone recognizes that value and you don't need a degree, you don't need anything else, but you have discovered whatever the universe has endowed you as a skill and the market mm -hmm. has recognized that this is something that I'm, I, I'm willing to exchange with the currency. So what is it now that this generation Z that, uh, of job seekers that we can recognize as valuable? In it? Fantastic. Now, finally, uh, Khaled, uh, let's go through what the current job seekers are experiencing. They go for a job interview. Traditionally, we would carry a CV. Um, most probably, we would have already submitted uh, online to the uh, concerned person. And then they go for the job interview. Where is it going wrong for them once the interview starts? And how can yeah. they improve or better themselves? I think it starts with the realization that, you know, uh, with mindfulness, they can dis discover that it rests upon them to show others what is unique about them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I'll always ask them, what do you spend, you know, your day is at 24 hours. What do you spend most of your day? On? What are you obsessed with? There must be some skill that other people are willing to pay you for. 
and I, you know, we do a lot of training. And I've done a lot of training, you know, since 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 my days as a college teacher, and I've always tried to, in the in the uh, in, in the internships or in the practical side of the of the training, I always encourage people to come up with a project, and I, I challenge them. I ask them create a project with the team, and have forty people around you. Mm-hmm support you whether by a letter or by a video or by a like on a video of your project online or by sharing it or by any means but just show me that you have shown your project to 40 other people and they have said that this is something good and we have seen it and what i was trying to tell them is is that you know the, the steps of creating experience out of nowhere mm-hmm. The fact that you can come up with a project is good. The fact that you can convince people to join you in a team, that's all the leadership skills and the communication Mm -hmm. skills that employers need. And third, the fact that you can share it with others means that you you have a good attitude and that you accept criticism Mm -hmm. and you have learnability. And the fact that others certify for this, this will give you the quality assurance. If you take this and you go to a, a job interview and someone tells you what experience you have, and you show them that you created something that 40 different people, public sector, private sector, family, friends, certify that this is something of value, the employer will regard it as something of value. Yeah, and has an initiative, yes. This is the least that we could do. Mm. The least a job seeker now that 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 they can correct all the wrongs that 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 may have happened during their 12 years of education mm-hmm. is to create projects that others can attest that this is this is a good this this is this is something that uh, the the community needs and i and i think that i really believe that every job there is no job seeker that does not de- deserve an opportunity and i see opportunities in oman everywhere we just need to uh, you know get through this really tough time of the impact of covid-19 and it has encouraged us to look you know within and this is something that is, you know, uh, in the job market, they call it the locus of control. Mm-hmm. And if it, it's, you know, there are two types of people, basically. People who believe that the locus of control of their life lies from external forces. You know, this is, you know, some, for example, the queue election, or this is a man observer that does not want to give an opportunity. Or this is the Ministry of Information does not want to give an opportunity. This is the society, this is the community, this is the universe. This is someone else who's preventing me from getting, realizing what, what I should be getting. Or there are people who believe that the locus of control lies within themselves. You know, I, there is an opportunity, but there is this gap that I need to bridge to get to that opportunity. And I think this is, if there is one thing that job seekers need to change, that realizing that the locus of control is perhaps telling me that maybe my opportunity is not here in that government job that I want so much just because my cousin, my mother told me, why aren't you not as good as your cousin who got a job at the D1 of Royal Court? And it is where, you know, this, this game that I played the other day online, and my friends told me that they, are, they would pay for me to, to play it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think yes, this is what job seekers yes. need to realize. Find your true value and sometimes realize, uh, you know, if this doesn't happen, something else is going to go. Most importantly, never give up. And finally, yes. I also want to say that, you know, you said that maybe organizations have options to go in for a freelancer. Now, couldn't the job seekers themselves be the freelancers? You know, move aside what we used to, you know, to find the job and who would pay and take care of the rest of your life. But instead, you be the one who's going to, you know, execute and you'll be the freelancer and compete internationally. So that yes, the local organizations definitely. will come back to us. Definitely. I totally agree with you. And this is our responsibility, really, not only the job seekers, because our society and our community for, for decades have only had a high, you know, placed a high value on the employee. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, my parents made their soul rest in peace. They would always encourage us, you know, if you, if you are not in the, gov- in the government job, what is it that you're really doing? You know, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and all of us heard heard similar comments, and I think this is what needs to change. 
because if I am a freelancer, but I go to the I go to my friends and they kind of put me down or make fun of me. And then I go to the bank and they tell me, we're well, sorry, we can't give you any facilities. Yes. Then I go to ask for, you know, for, for someone's hand in marriage. Married, and they, yes. tell me, uh, they tell me, no, but she has someone else who's, who's you know, who's, a, who's an employee at the, uh, you know, at the, at, at, at the, you know, at the army or something. Then what is, I, I won't blame the job seeker that he is very anxious and very worried. So this is, I, and I think the media needs to play a role here, that we need to tell the society, we need to place value, as you rightly said, on all honorable forms of making an income. If you're generating an income from an honorable, honorable source, banks should recognize you, families should recognize you, and you definitely should get you, agree to you getting engaged, and banks should start giving facilities. Otherwise, there's absolutely no meaning of pushing our young people to become freelancers mm. because this means that we, we are encouraging them to become second degree workers. Mm. And this is why mm. they are worried. This is why they are angry. They do not want to feel that they are less than other people. But then they're being entrepreneurs on the way. Yes, an entrepreneur is good. You can survive for a year or two, but sooner or later, and, and, you know, I, to be honest, I've experienced this myself. My friends experienced this. They're, they're, you know, how do you, for example, build a house? How do you get a loan to get a car? Okay. Um, how do you start a family if, if, if her family, you know, if her mother says, you know what, but where are we going to have the, uh, what do we call it? The, 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 yes, the stability. And, uh, yeah, and, and imagine, so there are so many other things Mm. Yeah, or we can just change the other things, you know, someone should be entrepreneurial enough and create organizations that give facilities without having to be an employee. There you but go. Then <laughs> even, yeah. So mm. this is, this is, this is, this is the underlying reasons that sometimes job, seek, job seekers do not articulate mm. uh, you know, as well as they should be, is that, you know, you're asking us to be that the perfect image of a young person, you know, with a, with a nice car, with a, you know, with a, with a, with a nice house, uh, with, with kids. And, but I, I know that if I keep that training job for two, three years, I know I'm not going to marry that, you know, the love of my life or my college sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not going to get that car. And I know, I, I know I'm not going to build that house. So, you know, what else can I do, you know? Mm. So this is, the, this is the source of yeah. frustration, yes. True, so um, with that, I want to say thank you, but hopefully we'll be joining you soon because this, uh, this is a topic that can go on and on because there's so much more uh, a job seeker should keep in mind if he or she wants the regular job. Um, like uh, the other topic we were talking about is how the employers are looking for the talent and the skills uh, team and as well as inclusiveness, diversity. So today there's so much more expectations than when we went for a job interview. So exactly. uh, I, I hope um, you know, more and more people like you would be out there to guide um, the job seekers and, to, and for the job seekers to shift from uh, the thought of actually thinking there is no hope, but to actually think uh, unique, like you said, and put yeah. your own print, unique print in the world, not even in the nation, but in the world, because I think the whole world is your opportunity today with technology yes. being there. Exactly, exactly. I would like to thank you for joining us, uh, Khalid Al Harubi, and wish you all the best for your venture. Uh, with an artificial intelligence technology and uh, hopefully you would be one of them you know who is hiring and providing more job opportunities wish you all the best and that's inshallah, inshallah. yes it is isn't it um, and you've yes. got you know ideas and I'm sure you're going to go ahead with it I wish you all the best thank you thank you Lexi. thank you and you've been with noted and we'll be back next week until then take care